Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are, or I am, continuing my testing all my products series. Uh, what's worth it? Today I'm getting into face palettes. So it got to the point where I needed to um, go through all of my colored face products. So bronzers, blushes, and highlights. And ooh. There's a lot. If you look at my collection as a whole, that's like one of the like blushes and highlights, highlights in particular, one of the most owned product that I have. So, or well, most amount of products that I own. There we go, that sounds a bit better. Um, and I didn't really know where to start. So I actually decided to break it up a little bit, do it in smaller chunks, make it a bit easier. So I pulled out all of my face palettes. Now, my face palettes are things that have more than one type of product in them. So they might contain a blush and a bronzer, or a bronzer and a highlight, or a highlight and a blush, or all of the above. Um, so I figured I would tackle them first. I have a tub here and I have a couple, uh, a couple here as well. Um, I'm gonna go through these and talk about my thoughts. There's definitely at least one thing I know I want to get rid of. I kind of hope I can bring myself to get rid of a couple extras. Um, but I will also have a bronzer video coming for you this month as well. Uh, turns out that that was actually not a small part of my collection. I would definitely say that I still have too many bronzers, but um, a lot of them were like double ups, you know, like I've got multiple Nars Laguna and multiple Hula bronzer from Benefit. So obviously I don't need to test, like, I can test one of them. And also their cult products I've been using for years. I already know what I think about them. Uh, there's a reason why there's multiple of them in my stash. So that one actually, that particular video, t video turned out to be quite easy to do as well. Okay, I'm going to start with this. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit. It's in light to medium. This is the powder version. I'm going to get rid of this. Um, I just never use it. Now, the reason why I don't really reach for it is because the only products that I would use in here are the bronzers. And I'm not likely to open up this palette just for a bronzer. I'm more likely to grab one of the many that I have that already work for me or I'm more likely to grab a palette that has like a full face of products in there so blush bronzer and highlight now the highlights up here I just I will never use them I'm not a fan of a matte highlight it's just not my thing if I am going to go for a highlight that is not glowy but is more of just like the traditional light versus dark kind of thing and I don't want it to have a, um, like a shimmery finish or a glowy finish or a sparkly finish I'm actually going to use a cream product that is a couple of shades lighter than my skin tone I'm not going to reach for a powder and that's because when I smile everything here pulls together and if I've got a powder over my base, it looks creepy. It looks, you can see the lines. So adding an extra powder on top of everything I've already done, it's just not my jam. I'm going to use a cream. It's going to help to minimize that appearance of like crepey lined skin. Uh, so yeah, I'm just, I'm never going to reach for them. This one over here is a little bit more shimmery, but... I have a million other highlighters that I like so much more. I'm never going to reach for this. It's a waste having it in my stash. It just takes up space. I'll never use it. Let's talk about another easy one for me. It's this guy from Kaleidos. It's the Charisma Contour Palette. This one is in warm and medium. This is actually in my project pan. And if you watch my project pan, you're about to get a little spoiler. <gasps> Who hit pan? I hit pan. Yay. Um, so I have been using this as a bronzer and I took the matte highlight shade and I tested it as, um, like a, a 
powder base to set my eye primer and the color is perfect whereas the ones in here they're nowhere near perfect that that doesn't work so that's how i've been getting through this one and i will finish it for that purpose but if i wasn't using it for that i wouldn't use it at all now the contour shade here i don't contour much i don't really feel like it's a step that i need um, I am quite lucky my cheekbones will create a shadow anyway and I can enhance that simply by using a bronzer and just sort of buffing it around the perimeter of my face. Um, I don't particularly like to add the extra step of contouring so I just I don't I don't really need to use it nor do I have any desire to use it. Now I do have one particular contour shade in my stash it is the fenty cream contour i particularly like that and if i'm going to keep one it's going to be that one now when it comes to the bronzer i like the bronzer i'm wearing it today you can really build it up if you're going for a more rich warm totally tanned look or you can wear it a bit more subtly and just have that you know like a subtle sun-kissed look I'm really enjoying this. I'm happy to have it in my project pan. I'm totally going to finish this shade. I will eventually finish the bronzer shade as well. But when this is, these two are done, I will just toss this out because I don't really have a purpose for it. I have used it as like an eyeshadow, but I don't need to do that. Let's do more ABH. This is the blush kit in Gradient. This is a super interesting face palette so there's four shades in here and I would say you've got like a contour a bronzer and two blushes this shade here Vegas with my notes I said that it's a really pretty shade but it is too pigmented uh, the tone is gorgeous though I just can't get away with wearing it unfortunately it's too dark this palette is made for people with a deeper skin tone. Then if we look at Dusk, which is this one here, this is like, it's a grayish tone, but it's got green in it and it is perfect for contouring. I can use it, but it's quite pigmented. So I have to be very careful. It's the type of thing I have to pick it up on a brush that is not too dense. I have to tap off the excess product and then I have to blend it really really well so for me to use it I have to put in a lot of work when we look at chocolate which is this one down here this is a really beautiful bronzer shade um, but it's too dark for me it is too dark and also because these are heavily pigmented to get a neat looking application you have to be really careful about how much you apply and then you can run the risk of it looking patchy when you've got lighter skin like my own. However, if you have deeper skin, which this is designed for, you're probably going to have so much better results than I would. This just isn't made for me. It's, it's not for me. Um, this shade down here, which is Blackberry my god I mean look at that it is stunning this color is absolutely divine but it is impossible for me to use it is way too dark even if I apply this very carefully and very lightly you can see that it looks a bit patchy and that's because it's not designed to be applied that way it's not designed for people like me um, I really like this palette. I think this palette has a place. I don't know if they still make these. Do they? I don't know. This was gifted to me, so it. I don't really like the idea of getting rid of it, but I can't use it. Um, I might see if I have a friend who would like to take this off my hands. Um, I can sanitize it. It's extremely lightly used, so yeah. We'll see, but this one, I have to pass it on. I have some more palettes here from Kaleidos. These are the Lo-Fi Duo Blushes. So I have Peach and Peach and Rose. So Peach is a really pretty peach duo. The highlight is, uh, I mean, 
it's stunning. I don't know if I'm going to really be able to show you. So it's right here. You can see it's pink and then it's orange and it's pink and it's orange. The orange shade is divine. It's so pretty. I adore it. Um, when we come to the blush, this is also a really pretty shade, but it does pull pink on me. Um, this is my issue with most blushes. I don't really like pink blush. Today, you wouldn't be able to tell, and I'm wearing it very lightly, so I wouldn't even blame you if you can't see it at all. I'm actually wearing an orange blush. Would you have guessed or would you have thought I'm wearing a pink blush? Because that's how it bloody well looks. I don't know what it is about blush, but it always pulls pink on me. And I actually really dislike the way pink blush looks on me. <laughs> Some are nice. Most I'm not into. Um, and I think I have a particular level of intolerance for it. Because I feel like everything pulls pink on me. And I, like, over the years I've become extremely frustrated with it. So there's that. I do think this is a very, very pretty duo. The blush is very pigmented, so that's something to be aware of. The rose one, um, again, if we look at the blush, it does still, I mean, it's got almost a purpley hue to it, but it pulls Barbie pink on me, which, I mean, we just discussed the pinkness. I'm sure you can guess that when we start getting into Barbie territory it gets even worse. The highlight is like a pinky purple highlight with like a pale gold. I'm not even going to be able to show you the goldness of it but again it's really pretty. It's a duochrome um, highlight just like the one in this one. Look I like these but I don't adore them. Now I am going to keep them because Kaleido send PR and if they were to release more of these I would like to be able to compare them if there are similar shades um, so I am going to hold on to them I do think I would occasionally reach for them to have a play with them but I don't think they're going to get the most use in my collection uh, but for work purposes they do have a place in my stash I also feel like the highlighter formula in these palettes is too similar to a like a metallic eyeshadow maybe I should try these actually as eyeshadows um the formula looks a little bit heavy on the skin so uh I think I would say that if they went back to the drawing board on the highlight formula these could be a lot nicer but in saying that, I don't think they're particularly bad. I just think for someone who's, uh, you know, 37 and got skin stuff going on, um, it's not an ideal formula, if that's, you know, fair. I have five NARS palettes. <laughs> and I think we'll go through these next. Oh, actually, I have six. There's one inside. Hang on. This is the one that's in my project pan. It is the NARS Angel Pride palette. So here it is. We have Laguna, which I love. Here comes a puppy. Hiya, she's gonna jump on me. Eee. No, she's running away again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is Laguna. I love Laguna. I have been using it for years and I think as long as they make it, I will always have at least one in my stash and I will always use it. This one here is Hot Sand. Now this is, it is a peachy sort of champagne-y shade. It's not just a straight champagne highlighter. It has some more orangey tones in there. Now, I don't like it. <laughs> this is one of their older palettes. I do think their formula has come a long way over the years. I'm not exactly sure when Angel Pride come out. Um, but I feel that this formula is just a bit kind of... I mean, it looks fairly nice there. But on the face, I just don't feel like it pops all that much. So I'm not really a huge 
fan of it. When it comes to the blushes, you've got Angel Pride 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's very pink, as you can probably tell. Um, this one down here, which is a mauvey shade, I don't mind. It's not too bad. You can see there, it, it kind of actually pulls a little bit... Uh, almost raspberry-ish, like it's got more reddish tones in it. Um, it doesn't pull as pinky on me. Um, I also quite like this shade here, which is a pretty like orange shade. The pigmentation is quite low, which I love. I don't like a pigmented blush because I tend to have a heavy hand and it, I, it just, it doesn't suit me. So I'm not really a fan. Now, these two here, I'm just not even interested. I will never wear them. I'm, it's, it's a no from me dog. I'm very, very sorry. This palette, I am actually going to retire. Now, it's in my project pan and I'm not currently using it in my project pan. So I will just keep it out for that for completion sake since I'm in the last month of it. And, you know, it'll have one last hurrah when I talk about it in my project pan video, but I'm essentially going to take this out of my collection as a usable product. Now, uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to get rid of it. I'm just not going to use it anymore. Um, some of you will already know this, but for those who don't, I have a real soft spot for NARS limited edition products, especially with the special packaging. Um, I've collected them over the years. This one is actually from 2017, so she's old. Um, and I don't mind having a little bit of like makeup history from a brand that I really love and I have watched grow and develop and improve over the years. Like, you know, some people collect shoes, some people collect bags. I am okay with collecting a few limited edition makeup pieces um maybe one day i will like scrape out the makeup i i don't know like if things are looking bad then obviously i will but i'm not going to use it anymore i am just going to keep it as a keepsake because i love it next up is one of their smaller three pan palettes this is the veil palette and i mean look at the packaging it's just divine. So we have three shades in here. We have Laguna, which is the bronzer. We have Love Struck, which is, sorry, Love Sick, which is the blush. And we have Surreal, which is the highlight. Now, I, I like all of these. Laguna, we don't need to go over it. We're beating a dead horse. <sighs> this is stunning. Love Sick is like... It's a red blush. Now, I cannot say that it is the most flattering blush shade for me, but I like it because it's different. And when I put it on, it actually looks the way a coral blush looks in a pan on my skin. So rather than putting on a coral blush that j then just looks like pink, I can put this shade on and it looks like a coral, like a beautiful orangey, vibrant coral. I love it. It's, I just think it's stunning. Um, and then Surreal, I mean, this is just glow, glow, glow. Uh, and a gorgeous light reflection. It's a bronzy-ish highlight. I do think it's a tad too dark for me, but let it be a summer highlight. When I have a tan, it's fine. I really enjoy this palette and I am going to keep it. This one here is the Hustle palette. This one's beautiful as well. The the packaging, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but they're tiny little blue stars that are just like all layered over the top of each other and then encapsulated in clear acrylic. It It's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Anyway, there are three shades in here. You've got two blushes and a highlight. I'm pretty sure the highlight is Crick. This one, or Creek. Cr oh, I don't know. French people help me out here. Um, this is a really nice, just like a traditional champagne color. Um, oh, it hurts my heart swatching this because every time I use it, it's like rubbing the beautiful stars off. Oh hurts my soul. So that is just a really beautiful champagne color. Very, very wearable. It goes with any look. It's super diverse. 
totally a shade that while it's not exciting it is so wearable um so you know i'm not mad to have it don't know where my camera stopped there but <laughs> this one here is born to be alive and that is the swatch there this almost has like a terracotta ish vibe to it when i put it on it still does pull pink but it's more it's more on the pink spectrum that I don't mind. To me, it looks more natural almost rather than like garish. And I think for me, pink tends to look that way on me. So I quite like that one. And this one down here is I Need a Man. And again, this is stunning. So when I put this on, it looks more like a natural red flush from like within the skin now i don't think it is a super flattering look especially if you're wearing a full face and makeup it kind of looks a bit i don't know it looks a bit off to me but it's fairly unique and mm, it's kind of fun it's kind of shade like when I put it on and I, I'm like, this is really weird because it, it almost looks like a no makeup makeup thing going on that creates this like really flushed red cheek look, but it's out of place because I'm not used to seeing that and I want to experiment with it more. This is one of those makeup items that makes me think about makeup on a level that is beyond just putting on makeup. It's thinking about how the product is working and how it is reacting with the skin and how it's creating these different effects. It's almost like on the spectrum of special effect makeup, which I kind of love. Um, so yeah, I am I gonna use it all that often? Probably not, but do I kind of love what it sparks in me when I play with it? Yes, definitely. That's why I studied makeup. Next up, I have the NARS Stephen Klein One Shocking Moment palette. So inside we have uh, the Paloma Duo. Now the Paloma Duo is a contour and a matte highlight. Um, I would say this contour is quite interesting because a lot of contours that we see these days um, they have almost like a gray undertone to them and I think that works really well for a very 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 fair skin type um, and it creates it creates a certain type of look it's pretty sexy I really like it but something that I feel like we don't see as much are um, contours with pink undertones. Uh, I don't feel like they're as uh, prominent these days. I feel like mostly we just see bronzers to be perfectly honest and you know brands bundle them in as multi-purpose and that's fair. I'm not really going to argue with that because uh, that's how I use a bronzer. Um, but I think this is a really cool shade. It actually has pink undertones. It's, it's awesome. Um, then we have Laguna. You know how I feel about that. And um, the matte, uh, sorry, the highlight from the Paloma Duo, I can't remember if I said it, but it's matte. So, you know, I'm not I'm not reaching for it much. Then we have these guys down here. I mean, what? <laughs> NARS love a pink blush to the point where it's obnoxious. So I think they go in the order of robotic, Blasphemy, Lustre, and Dolce Vita, I think. Um, these two here, not a fan. Like, I just, uh, no. I, this one did lean a little bit purple-ish on me, but not enough for me to want to wear it. The orangey one here, Lustre, I said it's a beautiful peachy shimmer and it's like a blush and highlight in one. Um, and I would wear it for sure. Then we've got Dolce Vita. Um, again, like I said, these purpley tones can have a tendency to pull a bit pink on me, but 
I didn't mind this one. It was okay. It's not something that I would reach for all of the time, but I might, you know, if I was using the palette, I might chuck it on just because I'm like, eh, we'll do something different and get a tiny bit of use out of it. Again, I'm going to hold on to this one. Um, I may retire it in the future. The bronzer has a bit of a dip in it. I, I have got some use out of this, but the blushes, I feel like when it comes to NARS palettes, like face palettes like this, I love them. I love them. I love them. <laughs> Obviously, I have a lot of them and I want to be able to buy more, but um, I think where I need to sort of focus my purchasing when it comes to products like this is more the small palettes because when you start getting into these big palettes right and you're like okay let's let's just ignore that for now let's say we've got a nice big bronzer there great fantastic size for the type of product that it is because you use it over a large space when it comes to all of the blushes you've essentially got twice the amount of blush to bronzer for this small section of your face whereas the bronzer for me goes all the way around so yeah it's just not like it's too much blush man I have said this before and I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record but I think the general like standard size of blush is too big anyway I know some people love blush they use heaps of it I'm just not that person so for me you know blush is hard because I I do like to own it I do like to use it I'm sort of on the hunt still for the perfect one for me um, but in that hunt I have accumulated 60,000 blushes and like I could never I would need 10 lifetimes to go through them all so there's that um, the Stephen Klein stays I may retire it in the future I can't remember if I said that already but for now it stays okay this this is a sarah moon palette it is recurring dare they call it a cheek and lip palette because it had a lip product in there um i haven't seen them do one like this in a long time where it was like a a duo of products in a palette but that's fine um i prefer it when it's just one type of product in a palette now in here we have <laughs> a little bit distracted with my thoughts um we have a highlighter and three blushes so we have albatross here which is like it's a classic shade from um from nars this is kind of like a white very bright highlight with an absolutely stunning soft gold um shift to it it's beautiful i i just i love it i think it's it's an iconic shade and I, I feel like if you've never swatched it or experienced it next time you're around a NARS counter just have a look you don't have to buy it but have a look I, I feel like it's iconic then we get into these blushes and I mean you might you might be already thinking that you know how I feel about this palette but I don't know this palette's different man so this shade here, which is Sex Appeal, um, it's, I mean, I don't know guys, it's just a little bit weird and it's too light for me and it's like baby pink and then just bleh, gross. Um, so obviously that's a no. Then we have Illustrative, a lust, no, Elusive, there we go, we have Elusive. Um, so again this one is a little bit mauvey um it still pulls pink on me but this is the sort of pink that i feel like i can wear and it doesn't clash with my skin tone um i mm, again we're going back to like some of the shades that we saw in the stephen klein palette like i'm not you know chomping at the bit to use them it's not going to be something that I sort of get into this little groove of constantly wearing every time I do my makeup because I'm just obsessed with it but every now and then I might like to reach for it because it's something a little bit different and I think you know okay a pink blush is going to work with the look that I'm wearing today so that's the sort of pink that I like to wear that's technically not actually a true pink now this shade here 
This is Make Believe and it turns out that this shade is really fucking interesting and it's almost, yeah, it's not picking up on camera properly. It's, I think it's like kind of fluorescent. It's really, really strange. Um, it's very, very bright pink, but it turns out that uh, that is totally a pink shade that I can wear. It suits me beautifully and I, I prefer it over the elusive shade. So there's that. Um, it's kind of, I would say it is a coral peach that is ever so slightly leaning towards fluorescent. Um, and something about the colour is just stunning. So I'm keeping the palette. I'm keeping it. Sure, there's a shade in there that I won't use. I mean, I'm never going to finish these uh, products, but also they bring me joy. So I'm keeping them. Okay, let's do my last NARS palette. This is the NARS Exposed palette. Yes. So this one was a mixed bag. This one up here is the highlight. It's Tell All. This is a nice champagne shade. Um, very, you know, like wearable. Wearable champagne. Um, there's not much to say. It's a champagne. You guys know what a champagne highlight looks like. The formula is nice. That's pretty much all I can add to it. This one down here is called Make You Mine. Um, so this is, I mean, it looks like a nice coral, corally peach shade. But again, it just looks pink on me. It's so sad. Like, I feel like, I don't know. It just, it kind of makes me sad that something like this can't just look like this on my cheek. Like, it, it completely changes. And I just, it's, I hate it. Um, now or Never which is this shade up here. I mean, I feel like this looks like a nude shade, but when I put it on my face, it pulls pink. So, I don't know. Well, <laughs> my notes... <laughs> uh, I must have been annoyed this day. How does nude pull pink? Why is everything fucking pink? Exclamation mark, question mark. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand. I understand that vibe. Um, this one down here is Come Hither. So I said this one was quite pretty. The purple tone seemed to suit me the best as a blush, which I agree. Um, this is a really nice sort of fuchsia. So I would say like a rich fuchsia purple shade. It's nice. I quite liked it. This one up here is Give It Away. Now, this is a beautiful bronzer. You could use it as a blush. It would really depend on your skin tones, though. Um, but I, yeah, I would say most likely bronzer. This adds some red tones to it, which is, um, I wouldn't really say it's unique. You can definitely find red-toned blushes, but I feel like it's a little bit almost out of place in this palette, kind of. Um, I would usually say that those sort of, red toned bronzers are better for medium skin tones uh, which is definitely not me however the formula of this is quite smooth and it blends really nicely so this actually works out to be a beautiful like glowy bronzer for me and I would be able to wear like I can wear it now if I just use it lightly don't go ham make sure the brush isn't too dense so I'm not applying heaps of it I don't need to blend it out for 20 minutes um, but in winter, sorry, in summer, when I've developed more of a tan, I could definitely be a little bit more mm, footloose and fancy free with how I apply it because it, you know, it would work. So I, I quite like it. I, I didn't think it would work for me, but I can use it. Uh, and this one down here is called New Fling. This, again, kind of like a, you know, fuchsia-ish purpley shade um, but it didn't look very good on me it's quite pigmented so I found it difficult to apply it in a subtle way which is how I like to wear my blushes um, and because I couldn't apply it subtly it just looked a bit kind of patchy and not not great I had to build it up so it was more heavy and then I felt like a clown so ultimately like it's just not it's not going to be one that I reach for much 
This one here is a Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. This is meant to be fair medium. No, it's not. There's nothing even remotely medium about this. This is fair. Only. Only fair. I mean, look at this. Yeah. No. They need to go back to the drawing board on, like, renaming the palettes. The bronzer is divine. I absolutely love it. The, listen, Charlotte Tilbury to me is the kind of makeup that it, it's like no makeup makeup. You can apply a lot of it and look like you're wearing makeup or you can apply a little bit of it and really look like you're not wearing any makeup. And I love that about this brand. The highlight is also very pretty. It is a nice like soft champagne glow. Oh, that's I've applied it quite heavily there so you know a swatch is a swatch and application is a million miles different to that um, I really like this I, it's stunning I want to get more use out of it I just have a lot of stuff so you know things go to the wayside but I love that let's do some Natasha Denona this is the tan bronze and glow palette so this has four pans. I'm going to start with this one up here, which is the Glow Cream Base. I don't, I don't know what it's meant to be used for as a base. Uh, look, she's probably, you know, talked about it in a million videos. I don't care about that. All right. Makeup shouldn't need instructions. Um, <laughs> so I just use it, you know, how I want to use it. Now, my notes for this say it's really beautiful and it applies nicely the bronze color is quite subtle so it looks very natural but the highlight aspect is quite intense if you layer for more of the bronze color it starts to look silly because then you start to look like a disco ball essentially um, if you have like a medium skin tone you could potentially use this as a highlighter it's very pretty um, I think we'll do super glow next yeah so this I will swatch this one this looks like it will be too dark but I don't know how it works it just works it's definitely formula related the way that it like blends over the skin um, it's a really beautiful gold highlight and I've got to say I feel like it's a little bit unique I don't know I have a pretty big highlighter collection so maybe there is something in there that I'm, I'm not thinking of but this is a really beautiful like warm gold highlight shade I do think it's a little bit more complicated to apply because it almost has this like sort of like a powder to cream formula or maybe it's just like a really rich powder so you know you have to sort of work it into the skin carefully to get a nice finish but I feel like it's worth it it's really pretty um let's do the blush and blush and bronzer powder next I do think this is too dark for me it's a nice formula um again it's kind of like that maybe cream to powder is that what she calls it maybe it is um I feel like it requires a light hand and I can probably use it if I had more of a tan but yeah I just I find it a little bit difficult to make it work um and even when I like blend it out you'll just be able to see and because it's got like it doesn't appear like it's blending that well essentially so because it's that sort of I think it's cream to powder um it once it's on it's kind of on uh so you need to work with it really fast which means bronzing with it it's a bit you have to like do it in sections so not my absolute fave um but I mean it's a nice palette what can I say then we have the glow impact powder so this is oh man it even looks amazing in the palette um, this is a oh, look at it it's like a little spotlight um, my notes say it's a gorgeous glow ever so slight shimmer when you're up close so when you like blend it out it does have this like very subtle sparkle to it but it's not 
glittery. The particles are extremely fine, so I feel like it just adds to the light reflect and gives it a little bit more dimension. It's beautiful, lovely, lovely palette. Obviously, I'm keeping it. This one is the Natasha Denona Blush and Glow Palette in Bloom. I want her to make more of these. They, these are just divine. So we have the Glow Cream Base. This is like, I feel like this is a highlight blush duo in one on me. It's beautiful and glowy. Um, it's Yes, it's pink, but it's just pretty it works i love it i i feel like this is the perfect product for um like no makeup makeup looks just divine it's like a natural looking flush but because it has that glowy aspect to it and it's a cream it makes the skin look so healthy and just plump like it's moisturized to the heavens i love it it's gorgeous the cream base, <laughs> this is intense, guys. It's crazy intense. Be careful. Be careful with it. I'm not even joking. Like, the fuck? Now, if you apply this carefully, it leaves a really beautiful raspberry tint on the skin. And I kind of love it. I think it's really pretty. The formula also allows for really good blending. These these two products on bare skin or over foundation that um, has a little bit of a dewy finish and hasn't been, you know, set to cement with powder, just divine. So, so beautiful. Like, the blend is, oh, it makes my skin tingle. I love it. These so nice i love them when we get down into the powder formulas the glow extreme um this i don't know what how does that look on camera i feel that like when i look at this i'm like that's gonna be glittery as fuck but it's actually not this again is kind of like uh it's a cool pink highlight with a slight gold shift to it and it's like a very pale gold I really like this I almost feel like I feel like it's pulling some ever so soft like lavendery tones maybe not maybe it's just maybe it's just my eyes maybe I'm going blind um I just think it's really pretty it's stunning um and the last one which is the duo glow again like I just consider this a blush and highlight duo like a, a hybrid product you can you know wear it um as one product to do two jobs and i think it, it's so pretty i also feel like this has that almost fluorescenty hint that i was talking about earlier um where it just i don't know something about it it's like a really, really bright, bright coral shade. And I, I think it just looks nice. I, I love this palette. I like both of the Natasha palettes. I'd buy more of her palettes if she, you know, released some color stories that really spoke to me. This one, it's fun. I like it. Okay, are we almost finished? I've still got five palettes to go. So I might actually do these ones next. These are the Colored Rain uh like blush and highlight duos i have proved my loyalty and call the shots i'm actually going to start with call the shots um this one uh, look i'm not really a fan when i purchased this one i thought this is the one that i'm gonna be able to actually wear but I can't now colored rain I feel like this is a brand it's a brand um, that was created by people of color and I, I honestly feel like their focus is people of color when they're creating their makeup and that is totally fine I thought maybe this color story would be the one that I could wear but it's very very pigmented and we have already had the discussion that's a beautiful shade. We've already had the discussion about how pigmented blushes just don't really work for me. That is also a beautiful shade. So I marked both of these. I have a traffic light system 
when I'm keeping notes on these. So I've got green for stuff that's like, yes, yes, yes. I've got orange for stuff that I'm like, or yellow. Anyway, <laughs> I've got orange for stuff um, that is a bit like, I can wear it. It's okay, but it's not like a home run. And then I've got red for stuff that just doesn't work for me. And this, this palette was marked as orange. Now, the highlight, uh, this one here, I said it doesn't apply as smoothly as I would like and it's probably better suited to darker skin tones so that you can apply more of it and buff it in. Whereas for um, lighter skin, I can only apply a little bit of it, otherwise it starts to look like I've got this streak on my face. It looks like war paint and it's not flattering. With the blush, again, super, super pigmented. Um, I I kind of, I feel like it looks, it matches my hair. I want to put it on right now. I'm putting it on. Let's apply it with a soft, fluffy brush. And we'll tap off the excess. Let's do it. Let's do it. Give me a, give me a mirror. I mean, it's kind of a cool color. But you can see, like, you know, there's like nothing on the brush. It is... It is too dark for me, unfortunately. Not too dark, it's too pigmented. It is too pigmented for me. Like, this is so much. Even when I wipe it off, it looks like so much. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty, though. Now I feel like I look like a clown, but it's a gorgeous shade and I feel like it complements my hair really well. Oh, I don't know. I was going to, I was going to get rid of this, but now I kind of, mm. okay, you know what? I'm not going to get rid of it because there's going to be plenty of opportunities in the future for me to declutter it. I'm too tired to brain. Let's move on to this one. This is Prove My Loyalty. This one I purchased because, oh my god, look at that blush. Now, this blush... <laughs> Guys... Crazy, crazy, I know. <laughs> that shade is just divine. I will probably end up using this as an eyeshadow, I'm not even kidding. Super unique. I have absolutely nothing like this. It does feel a little dry in the palette, um, but look at how that swatches. It's insane. The highlight, um, I feel like this is quite unique in my collection. This is like, a, it's a frosty white and I don't really have anything like it. Um, it does go on a little bit sparkly. I've mixed some red into that, although it looks, what, uh, I mean, it works, it works. Um, I really like the highlight. I think it's it's beautiful um, and quite unique to anything that I own, which I mentioned. I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it. My plan originally was to keep this one because both unique shades and to get rid of the peach, but it's kind of hard when I'm really enjoying what it just did to my face, even though I do feel like it's too much blush. Okay, let's talk about this. This is the Jaclyn Hill or Jaclyn Cosmetics uh, Bronze and Blushing Duo. So I have the shades uh, Lilac Love and Top Tan. Now, I this was gifted to me and I haven't used it much at all. But my kind of first, second and third impressions on this guy is that the blush shade comes off quite pink. Um, I feel like it looks a bit more pink on camera than it does in real life. Um, but when it's actually on my skin again, it like it pulls quite pink. The formula is very, very smooth. I'm just gonna put it out there. It feels really, really nice. Um, I don't think that this is an exciting shade for me, unfortunately, but I mean, we're not surprised after we've just gone through this video. Top Tan is um, a nice bronzer. It's not as smooth as the blush. This is actually going to be a really good shade for me in winter. 
um, when you can see it's like it's not very dark at all it doesn't have a whole lot of pigmentation this is going to be one that I try to pan and I most likely will pan the bronzer and um, scrap the blush eventually not super impressed but was curious very very thankful that someone sent it to me did I just stick my nail in that no I just sort of grazed it it's fine um, very very grateful I'm pretty sure a non sent this uh, very grateful to have received it and tried it out and I'm gonna like in winter I think I would just pan that bronzer because I don't think it's gonna be difficult to do at all um, and this that is like silk it's insane also the blush does have um, a little bit of a sheen to it which I think is pretty so you know there's that there's one that I'm gonna focus on panning and last but certainly not least I have some hourglass face palettes I do have more hourglass palettes but they have more like um, just blushes in them I think so this guy I have talked about earlier in the series when I was talking about like the face powders um, but here we have like the blushy and highlighty and bronzy things so we're just going to talk about these four here now surreal bronze which is this shade down here um, this is nice I like it it's very glowy I will use it I do think like this uh, I do enjoy these powders and I enjoy these palettes and the way they make me feel I'm kind of overseeing them because NARS just keep doing them year in and year out and like they're not reinventing the wheel at all um, and also the pans are quite small so I like to use a really nice big fluffy brush when I'm doing bronzer um, and you know those things just small pan big brush don't go well together especially when it's surrounded by other products so I think you guys can get what I'm getting out here the pan is too bloody small um, number three which is this one up here it is surreal surreal glow Surat? hell yes surreal glow um, this one I said you can hardly tell that it's on my skin but it offers a nice glow so it's like super light super super light now I like a super subtle blush so I don't have a problem with that uh, the next one is surreal effect which is this one yes this one I don't like it this whole palette right every single single thing in this palette feels like it lacks pigmentation like it's soft and it's subtle and it's you know very like quiet and then you have this shade which is just like symbols clashing like clang 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 I don't like it <laughs> I don't like it it upsets my chill essentially um, and down here is the strobe powder in strobe light it's real strobe light this is really nice it's a champagne shade you guys already know champagne shades and I get along quite well this one isn't uh, as light reflective or doesn't have that metallic light reflect like maybe this does um, it has that more like subtle sort of um, I don't really know how to describe it it's a, a more subtle glow it's a, a diffused we'll call it a diffused glow rather than like that um, and I like that I, I think it has a place it reminds me a little bit of like the oh what is the matte matte glow here we go here it is highlight 01 so this is the matte radiance baked powder I feel like it's similar to this in the way that it like reflects the light on the skin it's very very beautiful okay and the last one also from hourglass god this video went a lot longer than I thought it would um, this is their Illume Sheer Color Trio now when this originally launched years and years and years ago I saw it in Mecca and I was like oh that's beautiful and I uh, I didn't buy it and look it was smart that I didn't buy it because at the time I had very oily skin this wouldn't have worked for me 
but I have dreamt of this product ever since then and I couldn't get it because it was sold out and they didn't restock it because they wanted to make it vegan and cruelty free I believe this was it this year or was it late last year I think it was earlier this year they did it I don't know I can't remember anyway I picked it up um, so inside we have the bronzer the blush and the highlighter the bronzer is stunning I mean these are creams so you'll have to forgive the way they look when I swatch them they're quite soft too so you can pick up a lot the blush it does pull a bit pink on me but we're not going to talk about it um, and the highlight honestly the highlight is not as light reflective as I wish it was but I don't hate it and I actually think um, it looks absolutely divine on bare skin it is just stunning and because it's not super light reflective when you have it on bare skin instead of looking at it and going oh yeah she's wearing highlighter but no other makeup you're like Ooh, that her skin looks so healthy and so glowy so I love it I think it has a place when I wear this with a full face of makeup I want more out of the highlight but that highlight on its own stunning absolutely stunning I'm really glad I picked this up I want to get more use out of it um, I haven't used it a whole lot it's, it's kind of hard you know when I'm panning makeup and I have a big makeup collection as well and I don't wear makeup every day so it makes it difficult to actually use stuff but you know this is why I am doing this project so I'm looking at my desk now and I gotta say I'm not overly impressed with what I <laughs> with what I'm getting rid of I'm only getting rid of two palettes and I'm retiring one and in the grand scheme of things sure that's a it's a start but if you saw what else I've got going on back here um, you would realize it's a drop in the ocean but look I'm working on it I'm getting there I also do have my collection and potential I don't know how it's gonna work out this year my collection video is coming later in the month um, and I will try to declutter some things straight from the drawer and a lot of the drawers also need to be tidied up so maybe it'll be more of like a collection and tidy video <laughs> rather than collection and declutter videos uh, but feel free to leave your comments down below guys if you've got any thoughts on anything here if you own any of these and you you got some feelings that you need to get off your chest about them feel free to leave them down in the comment section I hope you enjoyed it I will be back tomorrow with another video and I will be back very soon later this month with another video in this series so I'll catch you then bye